investigative reporter in Donbass. Today is February 23rd and we're going to update the situation, what's going on in the war in Ukraine. When Russia's Vladimir Putin compared the situation in Ukraine to genocide, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz remarked that Russia's claims of genocide in eastern Ukraine is ridiculous. As you'll soon see, this kind of statement coming from a German Chancellor to, at all, or a country that's a guarantor of the Minsk Peace Agreement, is absolutely scandalous. Scholz is a member of the Social Democratic Party, which is part of the Alliance of the Greens, and that represents those parties in the European Parliament. And Alina Baerbock, the Foreign Minister of Germany, is another. Well, why is this scandalous? The Greens Alliance represent Ukrainian neo-Nazis like Pravi Sektor and Azov and bring their concerns to the European Parliament. Now with that in mind, well, we have a German Chancellor supporting the second generation of 1930s, 1940s Nazi thought in Ukraine. Now here's what really makes it worse. Schultz is denying the documented fact that these groups, Azov and Pravi Sector, are raping and murdering the same family groups in Donbass, the German Chancellor of that period ordered done by the same families of the criminals committing the atrocities. Yes, you heard that right. Am I comparing Olaf Scholz to Adolf Hitler when you're supporting the same groups, committing the same crimes and atrocities in the same place to the same families, and you hold the same position as Adolf Hitler did at his time period? As an American conservative looking at the evidence, what should I call? Olaf Scholz, Chancellor of Germany. And it gets even worse. Ukraine's President Zelensky just ordered Azov Battalion, one of the lead neo-Nazi atrocity battalions in Ukraine, to take down his political rival in Kiev by any means. And that's Viktor Medvedchuk. Medvedchuk's goal and position is to normalize Ukraine and to build an economy. Zelensky was elected on a mandate. He had 70% of, of the vote in Ukraine when he was elected to do two things. The first was stop the war in Donbass. The second was to build some form of an economy in Ukraine. Instead, Ukraine is facing a crash between now and July which is going to result in no companies, no work, no jobs, no electricity, no gas, and no hope. But Zelensky will have his war. At the same time, Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi are giving President Zelensky's regime billions of dollars. And Zelensky was just caught taking another billion dollars overseas. Gone. That's your tax money at work. Now we know what Joe Biden has to say about this, and we know what he's doing. If Biden sanctions Russia and takes them off the, Sw the SWIFT platform, Europe suffers. Their economies crash because of the amount of business they do with Russia, and they cannot pay for gas. The US, under Joe Biden, is importing 10% of its oil and gas products from, guess who, Russia. Get ready for a price spike if this goes much further. Now, as a conservative, what President Trump has to say weighs Donald Trump did an interview yesterday. He made very explicit comments about the situation, and especially Joe Biden. But more importantly, Donald Trump stated that under his watch, this would never have happened. Well, what's he mean? Ukraine's President Zelensky signed an internationally recognized agreement called the Minsk Accord, and it was the path to peace in Ukraine and Donbass and the reintegration 
of Donbass into Ukraine. But for the past eight years, Ukrainian leadership have refused to speak with the elected leaders of the Donbass republics at all. How can you establish peace with people that you won't even talk to? How do you reintegrate people that you won't even talk to? Well, what is Zelensky's plan and what's going on? The genocide that Vladimir Putin spoke about is the removal of all the people from Donbass, killing them, jailing them, or making them move. No, this would not have happened under a Donald Trump administration. And quite frankly, conservatives everywhere should be appalled. In the town of Shastia right now, in Lugansk People's Republic, the Ukrainian army is blowing up civilian infrastructure because it plans on leaving. They're blowing up gas lines, electric lines, water lines. Everything people need to live a modern life. Now, this may cause civilians to abandon a town. And this also falls under genocide. The Ukrainian army has been targeting evacuees. In Kiros, just yesterday, Ukraine fired over 36 shells. There are no military targets in Kirovsk. Every soldier is on the front lines, and the city has no defense. Right now, the government of LNR is trying to evacuate the elderly, the bedridden, the poor, everybody left in the city. And Ukraine is firing on them, on civilian structures. Over the last 24 hours, Ukraine has fired over 100 shells and missiles in LNR. The previous day, 29 villages were under fire. Ukraine is attacking civilians, and Mr. Schultz should be ashamed of himself. Mr. Zelensky needs to be prosecuted. We'll be following up the last feature within a few weeks, but in between, I'll be doing new shorts. Thank you.